Acabou já o carnaval, né? Na verdade, isso é quarta-feira de cinzas. Quarta-feira de cinzas. Acabou. Então, Acabou tá a festa clima. do Tá no clima, tá no clima de carnaval. Olha da carne! A gente não fez nada do carnaval. Já tá no programa aqui. <risos> Teve nem lambda lambda. <risos> não, não ia. O cara foi embora. O cara foi. O cara foi conversando. Não precisa mais abrir o programa. Foda-se essa merda. Eu não vou abrir, vou deixar todo mundo. Vai, vamos embora. Vai deixar o um negócio. Cara, não vai entender nada. <risos> Você, será que eu faço isso de sacanagem? Porque eu vou. Eu, eu, pessoa, tô me eu acho que tem gente que vai ficar meio. Vai, que não vai entender que começou assim, porque não tem. Ah, não, mas. Isso é uma introdução eterna. Vai ficar é, faltando, entendeu? Tá bom. Where is, where is the intercom? Eu também não bota os créditos, não bota a vinheta de abertura, não bota nada. <risos> eu provei carnaval, louco. <risos> carnaval é loucura, carnaval é saída. Aqui é nove meses a gente vê o resultado. Meu amor, o bebê está chacoalhando. <risos> Olha só, nada a ver com o carnaval. <risos> Aproveitando? Não, aproveitando porque nerd não tem carnaval. Essa Exato. É o carnaval vem perdendo a força no Brasil no sentido televisivo, que eu digo. Você acha? No sentido televisivo, sim. Porque antigamente, você, o nerd punheteiro que estava em casa o carnaval inteiro, você tinha um milhão de bailes para ver. Você tinha ele apochar, você tinha é, hum. vermelho e preto. Hum. É, meu amigo, isso é a brincadeira que tá rolando aqui no vermelho e preto. Você tinha um monte de pré-carnaval. Sim. E até galaguei, dependendo da sua opção. Tinha sim, tudo, sim, entendeu? Sim, sim, Hoje em dia não tem tanto esses bailes. Baile do William Porchat. Hum. A alta sociedade paulistana. Onde passava aí? Na, na, na Band? Band? Na Band, gente. <risos> Esse sábado, a partir das 11 da noite, ao vivo do William Porchat Clube. Ah, claro. Não tem mais isso. Eu não tem. Não Mas tem. só, a gente continuou com os não. desfiles. Tinha ó, desfiles de fantasias no, no do... salão do hotel. Claudio Bornai. É, Orconcú. É. Não tem mais essa coisa. Não, não tem mais. Um quando você vê um cara fantasiado parecendo pavão alado negro. Hoje em dia seria o, 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 o Demagorgon de Stranger Things. É. Imagina essa fantasia? É. Bob Bornai vestido o Demagorgon de Stranger Things. E aí ele puxa uma cordinha e abre. Ah, seria tão <risos> cheio de, de plumas e saindo da boca do Demagorgon. Todo de pasteiro. É fantástico, é cara. Bom. Aí, não tem mais essas coisas que eu tô falando pra você. Não, mas não olha, tem mais. Tem não o... tem mais. Não mas... tem tem os bastidores do carnaval da da CV, que é muito, é muito triste, né? <risos> ok, ok. Os melhores, os bastidores do carnaval você só encontra aqui. A RTV, ela veio pra sangrar o carnaval. Ela veio pra destruir. Essa é a verdade. Que a RTV entrou, entrou e acabou. Acabou com o carnaval. Assim, acabou com esse carnaval merda, putaria, que era só um monte de adolescente com mão peluda. Era isso. Isso não é o que eu acho que é, é isso? Eu got bored. <risos> Mas o, o grande carnaval ainda existe. Sim. Os filhos. O que ganhou muita força nesses últimos anos foram os blocos de rua. É, acho que Rio de Janeiro é uma Sim. um monstro, nego se prepara meses antes. O... Nego tem calendário rota, eu vou fazer esse bloco, aí eu vou tomar energético, tomar banho, vou pra esse bloco. Sargento aí, Pimenta. Tem que ir no Sargento Pimenta, tem que ir no, 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 no Cardozão, <risos> tem que sei lá onde. O do Mário Bros, lá de Santa Tereza. <risos> Mario Bros, o cordão da bola preta, tem um. Cordão, tem um... caraca, cordão da bola é, preta. Tem tudo, tem tudo. Tem tudo. É Sempre bola, meu bem. Uma Não pode julgar, vai Não, não tô julgando, é que é muita loucura. Xixi. Vários xixi. Amigos. Muito xixi. Ah, mas xixi tem É lugar. muito xixi, cara. Ah, até é para, muito... jovem nerd reclamando de xixi. Mas é muito Quem xixi. Quem ouviu o Nerdcast sabe. Dois minutos. Para com isso. <risos> Dois milhões de pessoas, cara. É muito xixi. Mas vamos lá, acabou. É, acabou acabou o carnaval, estamos aqui nessa quarta-feira de cinza, sempre é. meio triste, sempre chove. Você... Sempre chove. Toda, toda quarta-feira de cinza chove. E, e aí você fica... Aquela... Apuração da escola de samba. Apuração 10. Estação primeira de Mangueira, 10. Nota 10. Você fica... É, é, Caralho. Você não acha que esse é um prego no caixão do carnaval? É, esse cara aqui, é. 10. É, 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 é muito é, é como se fosse um sino de igreja declarando a morte. 10. 10, pan, <risos> nota 10, pan. Você tá não é velando o carnaval. Velando. A apuração, ele é o velório do carnaval. É o velório. Tem gente que comemora no final do enterro, não vou julgar. Mas é o que acontece. Enterra-se o carnaval pro ano que vem ele renascer como é. a fênix louca. Olha aí. Esplendorosa de plumas e paetês. Muito bom. <risos> Fantasia, poesia, carnaval. É isso. Someone will come along. Someone has come along. I grew up reading the X-Men and, and Wolverine, so I'm I'm one of those those kind of guys. <laughs> I'm nervous. No, no. <laughs> I was blown away by the movie, man. 
I'm so uh, thrilled. Yeah, oh, come on. No, I am <laughs> genuinely nervous because for me, this was my last chance to really get it right for the Oh fans. yeah, well, you know? since you mentioned, I came up with this word to describe the movie. I, was, I wasn't sure about your reaction to it until I saw you speaking it. Uh, the word is finally. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting that a lot? Yeah, and it's really thrilling to me because I hear from fans like you <laughs> a lot. Because as you know, like Wolverine fans, X-Men fans, comic book fans, they love the comic books since they were a kid. And when we don't live up to their expectations, <laughs> they tell you. Oh, and by the way, you suck! <laughs> and when you do something good, they'll tell you that as well. But I feel part of that family and I've been here a lot over the years and, and I never want to disparage anything that's gone before, but I really feel that there was something deeper we could do that to actually, that all the cool stuff for Logan, like the Berserker Rage and all that is only cooler and bigger and more impactful when you understand what fuels it, I sure. think. And so it was really a great joy to do this and to delve into it and to make a a movie worthy, I think, of this iconic character. Logan. I don't want to talk about it. Logan. Just stop. But on the other hand, I feel like we kind of needed 17 years to go by for us to absorb this movie. Maybe, I, I think, think I might have needed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I don't know if I could have made this movie five years ago. There's a lot has to come together. Emma Watts, Steve Asbell, Stacey Snyder, you probably don't know those names, but they are the, they run Fox. Mm -hmm. It's a big risk to make a movie like this. And sure. this was a decision that was made 18 months ago. They sort of said, okay, you can do it. And I remember sitting in the room with them and I said, guys, I fully understand if this is not what you want, it's very different. We may exclude some people by doing it, you know, kids, etc. But I think this is the movie and I'm only going to make this movie. And they said, do it. Like literally just like that, it was that <laughs> easy. And you were more involved in this production mm. like any other. Yeah. You mentioned on the uh, press conference about a, a t like two years ago, you made a recording in the middle of the night. There's some insights about the movie. Can you share a little bit of what you thought? About? I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I was so excited, so jazzed about it. Certainly Unforgiven was, was talked about, and the wrestler, aspects of the wrestler. Right. I was really as interested in what everyday normal life would look like for a hero or a superhero who was actually damaged by his past. Right not just glorified and you know there's there's a cost and Jim Mangold and I immediately called him and he just took it around with it I mean <laughs> he mentioned Shane to me and the gauntlet in terms of style and he mentioned uh, Little Miss Sunshine the idea of family right. around this guy that hates intimacy he was just so smart about it and really the movie is here but the, this idea was already in his head or it was some, something that you pitched I think I pitched the idea of sort of for the character, right. you know, but I think he'd always felt that too, you know. Right, right. But we weren't sure if they're going to say yes to it. Yeah. <laughs> we developed something, and we were kind of half expecting them to say no, no, you can't do that, because we have a certain brand that people expect a certain thing, and yeah, yeah, sure. And let's make the best version of that, but you can't just completely. Was that before or after that post success? Before, before. Oh, a long time before. What the shit? And I love that movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> what date did that come out? Oh, it's, uh, it was last year. I mean... Uh, like February, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I was rehearsing. We were already... <laughs> so we had our script a long time before that. Right. So you really got to credit those guys at Fox for simultaneously making two incredibly bold, out-of-the-box choices. And everyone knows the budget on that one. This was more. So <laughs> this is probably, in some ways, even more of a risk. Right, right. Mm. It is. I need the girl. What girl? You mentioned The Wrestler. That was a movie that got under my skin, Same. mainly because of you know, the breathing of the character. Yeah. The heavy breathing it takes your air away. Yeah. And I felt this too on mm. Logan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> was, yeah, no, was that the deliberate move of 100%. work on the breathing? Absolutely. Because we, I looked into a lot of physical ammo. What, what could it be? And it was so interesting to me. I, I, I can't remember, I think it was me, but I'm not sure. But the idea that he's with a skeleton of adamantium might actually be seeping metal into his system, which his immune system can handle for most of yeah. his life. Yeah. But when it breaks down, metal poisoning would be the obvious. And so joints, breath, the coughing, the fact that, you know, when he coughed up, you see the metal that has seeped through. 
that idea actually came from, and I hope she doesn't mind me telling you, but <laughs> Rebecca Romain, who played Mystique. Oh, all right. On the last day of shooting, she had a couple of shots of tequila <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> really? <laughs> like one or two shots, nothing. She felt really sick and she threw up and it came out blue. Oh my. And all this stuff that she'd had on the outside had seeped into her lung. And oh. I remember thinking, this organ we have is breathing and it's so right. do you just put metal inside and it's cool but there is a cost to that i love the idea that there is a cost to his greatest weapon you oh know? My God. there's a cost to being a destructive force of course. mentally physically emotionally <laughs> good question <Cool. laughs> hey come on ah! not okay I remember seeing um, in Band of Brothers that the, the veteran soldiers, they uh, had a, like a arrogant feeling towards the new recruits because they, they didn't want to get attached, make new friends, because right. they were all gonna die eventually. Right. And that is something that I saw in the movie, like love is, is most extreme emotion that we have. Yeah. And it's so good, but in the other hand, when you lose it, it's Devastating. Devastating. And do you think that was something that you wanted to bring to Logan? You would... That's at the center of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> You've hit right on the center of the movie. You know, I have kids. Do you have kids? Yeah. So I, I don't wish it upon them, but I think everyone should have their heart broken once in their life. It kind of <laughs> yeah. it makes you humble. It makes yeah, right. you understand relationships. It makes you understand your parents better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you don't want it too much. There is a point where things break yeah. and you can actually be heartbroken for the rest of your life in some ways. Now Logan, not in relation, but well, yeah, everyone he's known and loved has died. Sometimes he's been part of that. There's a line in the movie where he says, I suck, I suck at this. Bad things happen to people I care about. So gradually you start to associate yourself with those deaths, with that pain. And it's way easier just to put up a wall and say, I'm not going to care about you. Don't you care about me? It's simpler. It's easier. <laughs> And isn't this some of the essential questions that's going on in the world today? It is, it is. So we know this is the last yeah. movie as Wolverine. A cameo appearance at a Deadpool movie wouldn't quite technically be yeah. a Wolverine movie. You think I still can do that? <laughs> Maybe. I'll be given the blessing. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> Ryan asks me all the time. Right now. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I keep saying, you're not good at hearing no, but. <laughs> That man right now doesn't need me. He's <laughs> that character, that movie, that's a franchise. He's just <laughs> killing it. But I get it. Maybe, maybe my timing is a little no, off. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks. You still have time. Perguntinha da semana, Zagal. Esperar do carnaval do ano que vem. Porra, já? Você tá pensando? Muita gente tá pensando. <laughs> Ai, ai, desculpe, gente. Ela tá fora de controle. Ainda bem que o carnaval dura quatro dias, senão já vai na rimaria. 